What's up, Lowrider family? Welcome back to another episode of Lolo Zamar. Now today, we're going to be installing the bridge on this big boat, on this big caddy right here. Um, so, as you guys can see, I already have the car off the ground, took the wheels off. Um, what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to take off the shocks, remove the springs, and after I do that, I'm going to cut away that little perch that the spring is sitting on. I'm going to cut that away and uh, we'll start making the uh, the C channel, U channel, whatever you want to call it. We'll measure it out, and cut it, and then weld the power balls that I got sitting up over there. Um, weld it to the bracket, then weld it to the axle. Before we weld it to the axle, we're going to make sure that the holes are straight as you guys know we will be putting in the bridge on this thing the bridge is somewhere underneath that pile on the floor so I'm gonna dig that out first things first spring and the shock and then we'll get started after that oh during during the week the homeboy brought me the the batteries that he's using on this caddy some armor plate some good batteries so yep I'll, pot, I'll be making the hold downs I think next week if I have time then I'll do them today it's pretty simple stuff so uh, let me take those things off and we can get started but those that don't know how to take them off you take off this nut and bolt right here and you do the same for up there there's two two nuts and bolts up there same thing for the other side a spring usually these would just sit in here because they're com slightly compressed in here so um, after we take off the shocks um, we'll see how low this axle will actually drop I got the jack underneath the axle so that I can take these off without too much tension being on them so let's get started I'm gonna take these off and we'll be right back to take off the springs okay as you guys can see I took one spring out already so what I did only one thing I did was um, take off the shocks from the bottom mounts first on both sides and then since I had the jack underneath the axle I dropped the jack more all you do is pull down on the axle on the side that you're working on. See if I can do this. It should come right out. There we go. That's all you do with the springs. Rear springs are the easiest ones to come out. So now you got room to put your hand in there to loosen up those two nuts and bolts right there. So, let's go ahead and do that right now. You know, we're at the easy part already. So, yep. Let me just take those shocks off completely and we'll be right back. And I'll let you know what uh, I plan on doing next. Alright. So, as you guys can see, uh, everything is out. So, the next plan of attack is... Uh, I'm going to cut these off right here on both sides of the axle. Cut them off and then grind down the factory weld down to the axle. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, grind a little bit on the axle to where the C channel, U channel is going to sit. Where the power ball is going to sit, I should say. As you guys can tell, I also moved the brake line. With old cars, make sure you guys move them slowly. And make sure you don't make any kinks in it. You make a kink in it. Once you bend it back, you're, you're going to need a new brake line. So, I did that to both sides. Move the brake lines, the e-brake, out of the way. Um, I also undid the the uh, the mounts for the exhaust. I undid the one up in the rear and then one right before the axle. I undid them. 
So when I'm ready to put the bridge in, all I gotta do is unhook it real quick. The, the exhaust will drop and I can slip in the bridge. So that's the plan. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these. Um, and we'll be right back. All right. So I took off the spring uh, lower mounts on both sides. And I also went ahead and cleaned up the areas where I'm going to be welding the uh, the C channel to the axle. So I got the bridge here. I got the C channel there, power balls, and some tubing I'm going to put in the holes once I cut them out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut up the 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 bracket for the power balls real quick. I'm going to cut them at 6 inches uh, and weld the power balls to them. So uh, let me do that and we'll be right back. Okay, I just finished welding the power balls to the U channel, C channel. So remember everybody, if the wells don't look like this or better, don't let that person build your lowrider. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the distance in between the frame I'm gonna go ahead and cut the the C channel I mean well the bridge you can say um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the chan uh, the bridge and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the holes out um, so and remember everybody when you guys are cutting out your holes for the trunk for the cylinders Make sure that they're bigger, not just hugging the cylinder, because if they're hugging the cylinder, they're going to tear up the, the trunk floor real bad. So, so yeah, so let me uh, measure and cut the bridge and uh, cut the holes out. And for cutting the holes out, for those that haven't seen it yet, um, I use a... Uh, 
what's it called? A hole saw with a drill. Um, just regular drill like that one. Right there. With a hole saw. Just make sure you got a good quarter inch. Quarter inch, yeah. Of play on each side of the cylinder. That way it won't tear it up. So. So, yeah. Let me do that and we'll be right back. So, I need the holes for the cylinders to go through. side so you guys can see nice clean cut no plasma cutter or torch both saws are the way to go but when you're working with thick metal like the bridge over there I kind of do recommend the plasma cutter <laughs> it's faster <clears throat> um it's dark and it's kind of annoying of putting lights out for when working on the car and then plus where my parents live there's a bunch of older people here and even though it's not eight o'clock yet people complain about the noise so and then my sister called me while I was building the rear um, telling me that she had a flat tire so I had to go save her but so that ate up a little bit of my time um, and the unfortunate thing is that whatever car I work on in my parents' garage um, needs to be drivable at the end of each day. So, um, I'm going to have to throw on the, the cylinders. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, will these things on there, will the power balls on the axle on both sides. Um, and then slip the cylinders in and slip on some stock springs and call it a day um, yeah so kinda kinda upset that I didn't get to put the bridge in or else I'll be closer to finishing up the caddy I mean, the homeboy, he's not in a hurry to get the caddy back, but, you know, I want to get things done. But, um, doesn't always happen, I guess. But I wish I had my own garage so I didn't have to put away all my tools and put the car back together each time I had to work on it. That's what sucks about not having your own garage. But, uh... Let me weld these things on, and we'll be right back after I do that. But uh, but the little tip to get getting these straight on there to to match the holes that you make, um, pretty much put the cylinder, attach the cylinder to it. Put this on the axle. Don't weld it on yet, and then move it from side to side until the cylinder sits straight with the hole and and I mean you can use a uh, what they call them? those levels you can use a level but you know they're not always all that great because the axle moves a lot you know because uh, I kind of don't want to get out more jack stands it's, it's that time of the day where you just want to quit anyways all right, <clears throat> let me uh, let me center these on there straight, and we'll be right back. So, I got the cylinders, springs in there. Now all I do is uh, weld them on completely. Um, so <clears throat> it took me a little bit to have them straightened, but the cylinders are nice and straight in there took a little bit because last thing you want is one of those cylinders rubbing but eventually this has happened multiple times I don't know why and I do what, everything I can to for it not to happen but all of a sudden even though this is straight I have the I have 
all the weight on the cylinders right now. I have the jack on the axle, and um, it's being supported by the rear cylinders right now. But what what always ends up happening to me? I don't know why. I do everything and anything to prevent this, but all, all of a sudden they'll slowly start creeping to the side. It was a cat. Uh, they'll start just, you know, creeping to the side and then they'll start rubbing, which annoys the hell out of me. I've done anything and everything before, so hopefully that doesn't happen this time. I don't know why, but it happens every now and then to me. Where the cylinders will be sitting straight and then all of a sudden, a few days later, they're sitting crooked and, well not hella crooked, but just a little crooked. And then they start rubbing. And making noise which is annoying so that's the hard part I guess about getting these rear cylinders straight the last thing you want is them to to be squeaking and it's uh, it's embarrassing but uh, you will see me put that bridge in another day it'll probably be the same day that I put the cylinders in the front um, so yeah let me weld these uh, power balls to the axle and we'll be right back. Alright, so I welded both sides on, both of the power balls. I welded them on. Some good welds on both sides. So, that's it for today. And it's a bummer I couldn't put the bridge in. That really upset, upsets me, whatever, upsets me. Um, yeah, so, you'll see it on another video, it'll have to probably be with the, the video that I'm either wiring the stuff or that I'm putting in the front cylinders, so, yep, taking a lot longer than I expected, I mean, things have, have been happening that I haven't expected, you know, so, and then people want the other stuff done, you know, and they want it done in a hurry, but, you know, so stuff comes up, so, but yeah, this thing's coming on great, better than I've ever built before, you know, rack-wise, and, uh, stuff like that, but for the blows that don't know how to weld, Don't work on other people's stuff yet. Just practice, you know. Grab a couple pieces of scrap metal and uh, start practicing. I mean, get your flow on, you know. You'll get your. Everybody has their own flow on how to weld. I got my own, and it works. And I have I haven't had anything break that I've welded. So, but yeah, that's it for today. Today was not a success. So. Hopefully you guys like the video. If not, I understand. Probably a little boring today. Um, but yeah. Hopefully you guys subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. I do a lot of how-tos. Very little vlogging. But, you know, stay tuned. I got some more stuff coming. I got another car after this one. Um, his, the car that I'm working on next... Um, he, here he bought the car built already and one of the cylinders the springs are already through the trunk and he just needs a bridge and then he said he wanted a, a bracket for a third pump to weld into place so I think that's all he wanted unless he wants me to do some more work to it but that's about it but alright I'm going to call it a night for sure I'm just, I'm just going to paint paint what I welded put the wheels on clean up and get out of here I'm beat for just a little amount of work that it looked like I did today. <laughs> so, subscribe, like the video. Um, um, don't forget to comment down below. Peace.